this queue in a data structure. So these are the learning outcomes. At end of this session, the students will be able to demonstrate queue in a data structure. So let us start with the topic that is the queue. So the queue is the data structure where the elements are added from the one end and removed from the other end. So when the first element in the queue is known as an front, the position of the last element is known as an rear. Now suppose this is an array where the size of this array is 4 that is a of 0, 1, 2 and 3 here. The front will be pointing towards the first element in the queue and rear will always point to the last element in the queue. Now whenever you are going to add the data to the queue or the item in the queue so insertion of an element is carried out from the rear end only means always when you are going to add the data it should be added from the rear end the deletion of the element is carried out from the front end so whenever you are going to remove or de delete the data from the queue which is done from the front end only so the queue is known as an first in first out that is FIFO that is for example, the queue, whenever the student comes for depositing the fee at the counter, which comes from the back end, that is an rear end, and deposits its fees, after depositing the fees, it leaves the counter from the front end. So whenever the next person comes for the filling the fees, it get added towards the rear end, means one after the other. So by getting the service, the whenever is going to over the service, it is going to leave from that place. So that's why the queue is known as an first in first out that is FIFO. So now we will see the queue operation. So there are two main basic operations that is NQ and DQ. So the NQ is nothing but where the data is going to be added in the queue. Where the DQ is the remove an item from the queue. So while doing an NQ operation we have to check the condition is full that is the queue is full or not. DQ when you are going to remove an item from the queue we are going to check this condition that is is empty we are going to check that the queue is empty or not so we'll see in detail now the nq and dq operations so let us see now the implementation of queue so what will be the initial state when the queue is an empty so we have taken the size of an queue that is a of 0 1 2 means the size of an queue will be 3 so we can insert three elements at a time now so at that time the front and rear will point towards this position the front will point at a of 0 and rear will point towards minus 1 here means the, this condition is known as an q is empty nq operation so whenever you are going to add the data that is equal to 10 so the 10 is going to add it from the rear end which comes and sit at this position that is a of 0 that is front will be at same position that is a of 0 and rear will be incremented from minus 1 to plus 1 means whenever you are going to add the data in the queue the rear is incremented by plus 1 so the rear is incremented from minus 1 to 0 here now so that's why this is first and the last element in the queue so the front will always point towards the first element and rear will always point towards the last element in the queue now suppose if you want to add the 20 at this queue here so what will happen the front will be at the same position but the rear is incremented by plus one means what happened this is the first element and now this is the last element in the queue so now this is an nq operation so whenever you are going to add 30 so the front is kept at the same position the rear is incremented by plus one now so this is the position of the queue so front is pointing towards a of zero and rear is pointing towards a of two here so now the queue is full here in the same manner if you are going to do, do an dq operation dq operation is nothing but you are going to remove an element from the queue here so while deleting the data so the first element was at 10 so if you want to delete that data so the front has to be incremented by plus 1 now 20 will be the first element in the queue so that's why it is pointing towards a of 1 that is 20 so this is the same way the rear is going to kept at the same position it is not going to be incremented or decremented while doing a dq operation so if you want to delete one more data from the queue that is and delete data 20 so the front is going to be incremented by plus 1 and rear is kept at the same position that is front is now at the 30 showing at that position a of 2 only so if you are going to delete one more time so that will be an empty queue here that is delete 30 
so the front and the rear will be point towards the initial position that is front is equal to 0 and rear equal to minus 1 means what now automatically your q will be in empty state so the front and the rear will be reinitialized to that condition that is front equal to 0 and rear equal to minus 1 here now after this uh, pause this video and answer this question if you have understood that so what happens if we perform nq operation and there is no space to insert and what happens if we perform the dq operations and there is no elements to remove so what will happen so the answer is here in the case of this array the nq operation is not possible and this situation is called as an q overflow so that's why so while performing this nq operation so every time we have to check this condition that is an full condition check if the q is full if the q is full you cannot insert the new element here so while doing an nq operation every time you have to check this condition is full if this condition is not satisfied then you have to do an nq if this condition is satisfied you cannot insert the new element in the q in the same manner what happens if you perform the dq operation when there are no elements in the q so dq operation is not possible and this situation is called as an q underflow condition in the same manner if you delete the 30 so that the front pointer and the rear pointers are pointing towards 0 and minus 1 respectively so if you try to delete the elements from the queue what happens it shows an message the queue is in underflow condition you cannot the delete the elements from the queue as there are no data in this okay so that's why while doing a dq operation so we have to check is empty condition if this condition is satisfied you cannot remove an item from the queue if this condition is not satisfied you have you, you will be able to remove that <coughs> elements from the queue so we'll see now what is the front and the rear of the queue so to keep the track of the first and the last data of the queue an integer variables front and the rear is maintained respectively so the nq and dq operations are performed with the help of front and the rear variable only so when the data is enqueued in the queue the rear variable value is incremented by plus one in the same manner when the data is dequeued in the queue the front variable value is incremented by one size is the variable that the maximum number of data can be enqueued in the queue representation of an queue queue can be represented using only one of the following of the data structure that is using array and using a linked list so in the next lecture we are going to see the implementation of queue using an array so why we are going to for an array which is very simple to use and easy to understand array of fixed size and an integer variable of front and the rear are needed to be implemented using the array concept here so for linked list we have to make use of an pointers here so later on we'll see this so before implementing a linked list we are going to see using an array here so these are my references that is i have used the books that is c in depth that is by the polish Vasto, which is the good and this is the site which are going to be used for the references thank you